All right, so I had a couple requests to um, look back at the um, linear approximation for nonlinear systems uh, homework. So the, the very first problem um, actually doesn't have much to do with linear approximations. It's more just the solution strategy that we have for nonlinear systems. So we're, we're given this nonlinear system here, and we're asked to find the critical points of the system. So you'll hear in class, sometimes I'll call critical points equilibrium points or fixed points. That, um, those are all, those all mean the same thing. Um, and the idea is that at those points, if you start there, you'll remain there forever. So critical points are points where the derivative with respect to time, so that's our x dot y dot here, is equal to zero. So to, to solve for them, we set the derivatives to zero. So I would have 0 equals 1 minus x, y minus x, and then 0 equals y minus 4x minus 1. Okay, so then I'm going to, so this gives me two equations and two unknowns, y and x, and I need to solve for them. And because they're nonlinear, we can end up with more than just one solution. So in particular here, we have 1 minus x and y minus x. So the product of that is 0. So that will be 0 if 1 minus x equals 0 or y minus x equals 0, right? If either one of those terms are 0, then the whole thing will be 0. So this tells me, gives me a solution x equals 1, and this gives me a set of solutions y equals x. Okay, so then... We can take that and plug it in here. So this second equation I could rewrite as maybe y equals 4x plus 1. So then this solution is pretty easy to plug into. So I should get y equals, so that's y equals 5. So my first critical point would be 1, 5. And then over here, I'd, instead of having just a numerical value, I get that y equals x. So all I need to do up here is plug one of those in and solve, right? So I'm going to plug in, say, well, if y equals x, then my y on the left-hand side up here, I can rewrite as x. So I get 4x plus 1, therefore minus 3x equals 1, so x is minus 1 third. And then, well, how do I get y? Well, I also know that y equals x, so I get minus one-third, minus one-third. And those are my two fixed points for this system. So what that means, those, those points, if I start with the initial condition, x equals 1, y equals 5, and I run that through, then I'm going to end up with I'm going to stay at that point always. All right, I'll never leave that point. And same thing for negative one-third, negative one-third. If I start at either one of those two points, then I stay there forever. So or fixed points. Or in this case, we call them also critical points. You can tell it's an important concept in math when it has like 10 different names. Okay, so, so um, that's, the, that's the solution to that particular problem. Um, but obviously, you know, I, I want to show you more than just how to solve one, one problem. We want to understand the whole um, solution strategy here. So allow me for a second to talk a little bit more generally about how these systems will behave. So let's say that I've got a system that's just, so I'm just going to write this in a general way here. Right, and so now f and g could be any usually nonlinear function of x and y's over here. And um, so, 
if we're if we're going to solve for critical points, we're going to end up with some algebra to do, right? So f of x y zero equals g of x y. And the thing about this is, when we when this problem was designed, it's designed to where you can do the algebra. It's not so bad to to solve those, but in general, for these for some bizarre f and g um, that you might encounter in a in a real nonlinear system, this might not be so easy um, to do by hand. And so, uh, the technique that I is my go to uh, for finding critical points like this is to plot the two functions. So I'm going to plot. So sometimes you'll have to do this in an implicit way, but I'm going to plot. So if I plot those two functions, and let's just so I'm plot them in the xy plane, and let's just say that my f of xy is x squared plus y squared minus 1, which would give me the unit circle, and that my g of x, y is y minus x. So when I, when I plot that, I'll just get the 45 degree line, y equals x. Set those equal to zero. So that means in this, in this case, when I plotted those two functions, you can immediately identify what the critical points are as the points, so, so the blue line here is the set of points that satisfies this equation, and the, the red curve are the set of points that satisfy this one. And we're looking for things that satisfy both at the same time. So the intersections of these two curves show the critical points. And so th these are very important um, in terms of, you can also you get a visual of, of what's happening in the system. So the F and G curves with the derivative zero are called the null clients. So you might hear me suggest, well, just plot the null clients as a way to find the fixed points. And um, you know, this is this is a more general technique. And maybe you know, if you want it numerically, you have to zoom up on this point and get the x and the y coordinates from it. But it also just gives you an idea of where the critical points are in a qualitative way, um, and the number, et cetera, um, by visualizing this plot.